Hey, Daniel Chang again over here. And today I'm going to spend a few minutes to talk about EDIs. So what's an EDI? An EDI is an electronic data interface. Basically, in other words, because I always have to remember what EDI means, I just say EDI, is data that is being transferred from one location to another. Now, it could be that it's internal within your own company where system A is transferring data to system B. Now, system A was developed by manufacturer A, system B is manufacturer B. So by nature, they don't talk to each other. So they created a system in between, which is the EDI, that helps to extract data from one system to the other. It translates that data into what is called the EDI let's call it language. In this scenario, I don't want to go into the very specific terminology. I just want you to understand the basics. And from there, it translates to whatever thing that system B understand it. So that's basically how it works. Now, there's a lot of risks around that, but not so many. Now, how EDI usually is being used is also to transfer data from one company to another. So let's think about it more from a commerce perspective. So you are as a customer go to, let's say for example, Amazon, and you purchase a product, you purchase a calculator, for example, and then Amazon will place that order and will send that because Amazon is not the one who produces the calculators. So let's say for example, Amazon sends that calculator order, just this happen, my light. So Amazon will send the order of the calculators, let's say to Casio. So Casio now fulfills that order, but all of that happens automatically when the customer place the order in Amazon. So how that Amazon is able to communicate with Casio almost in real time so that order is being placed? Well, they use EDIs in order to do that. They basically, it's not that a person is typing the order or anything. It's a computer that basically takes the order in Amazon, translate it into what Casio understand it and send it to Casio's uh, warehouse. And then Casio will deliver, ship it or do anything with that and send it to the customer. So let's throw a few of these things because with all these hands around, sometimes it's a bit harder to understand how everything works. So let's come over here. Let's go to the whiteboard. So let's use this example as a perspective. So here's the customer and you come over here, you have your computer and you connect over here to this server. So let's say in this case, this is Amazon, right? So you place the order over there. Amazon comes over here and communicates to this other server. Let's say this one is Casio. I don't know why I thought about that brand. But anyways, so let's say it comes over here. That's basically everything. So what we're saying is that over here we have an EDI. Now an EDI will have different areas and different perspectives. So let me check over here some of these things just to make sure I have all, all of this complete and accurate. So where is mouse here? So all of this happens through the EDI. Now let's think about it from a risk perspective, right? We're sending over here a transaction that Casio thinks that is correct to what the customer says. So let's say the customer says, Hey, I want one calculator and the calculator cost, let's say $10. That's the order that was placed by the customer. Well, Amazon will take that order, will put it into their servers, will send that order to Casio, and Casio will fulfill the order and will send it to the customer, right? So Casio will have to make sure that at least one calculator is correct. Because what happened if suddenly they send 10 calculators to the customer because something happened in between? But at the same time, Casio needs to make money, right? So let's say, for example, Amazon makes $2 out of that transaction. So Amazon charges $10 to the customer. Amazon takes $2 
So they send that to Casio and Amazon, because Amazon is the one who collected the money, they send to Casio the eight remaining dollars. Well, Casio has to make sure that they are receiving the eight dollars that they are supposed to. So let's take a look over here, because when we think about IS audit, we have to always think about what are the different risks that are happening when we think about the different areas and scenarios. So one of the risks that we have to think about over here is the entire risk. So let me change the color. So the main risk that you have to think about over here, let's say your company is Amazon. So let's think about it. Sorry, your company is Casio. Uh, actually, that's not going to work from that perspective. Let, let's work first with Amazon. So let's work first with Amazon as a company. So Amazon needs to make sure, and we're focusing right now only on EDI. We're not focusing on the customer transaction. We're not uh, focusing on any other details over here. So what we need to make sure over here is the, what it will call the outbound of data, right? The outbound of data because Amazon, <clears throat> Sorry, Amazon is sending data to Casio. So it's getting out from Amazon. So we have the outbound of data. So what are some of the risks of sending data to Casio? Well, the risk is not about sending that it was one calculator or saying that they charge $10 or saying that it cost $8. That's not the risk because that's something that Casio needs to know. Some of the risks that could happen, well, Casio also needs to know the customer information, right? But what type of customer information Casio needs to know? Maybe the name, maybe their phone number potentially, if, you know, as they're shipping, if there's any issues with shipping and definitely their shipping address. They don't need to know anything else. So some of the controls that needs to come over here in the outbound of data needs to be what type of data are we sending to this other customer? What type of data we're sending? That means making sure that is appropriate, make sure that is approved. So there's probably uh, an approval method to have Casio over here to make sure that they create this EDI. It's not that it happens for magic. So there's an approved method to make sure that, hey, we're sending you the product, we're sending you the price, we're sending you the customer information, but only the name, phone, and shipping address. We're not going to send you the email, for example. We're not going to send you the credit card information. Now, what happened if for whatever reason we are sending that information, right? So that will be the risk of Amazon, because if that information get leaks out from Casio from whatever reason and uh, credit card or customer information is hacked over here outside of Amazon, well, we will come back to Amazon and saying, hey, Amazon, you have this EDI and you were sending emails and credit card information to this other entity where you shouldn't have been sending those ones because that entity don't need that information. So that's a huge risk for Amazon, right? Making sure that you are also capturing your logs of payments, for example, in a separate file. Let me explain that a little bit further. And I'm not gonna go through all the risks. I'm just gonna go through some of the major ones. So you're receiving over here a payment, right? Now you're recording a lot of logs. Payments are usually very sensitive in the terms that is a revenue generating for companies. So what happened if someone have access over here to the database and saying, hey, we didn't receive $10, we actually received $20. So now they are making it look like Amazon is receiving more money than they are supposed to be receiving or less money than they're supposed to be receiving. That's why when you are capturing logs of what information is being sending out through EDI, usually payment information goes into a separate log just to make sure 
someone were to have access to even the logs or, or that information um, is protected. And you can always try to go back. And if something goes wrong, you can always look into the logs and see what have happened. You have to also consider segregation of duties in terms of what are the transaction and authorization processes on the EDI. Who's able to modify this EDI so the data is being flowing to make sure that the appropriate data is being flowed. What happens if someone have access to this EDI and now they say, hey, we're going to be sending emails and credit cards because actually this is my company and I have access to the EDI or something similar, right? Someone could benefit from that or someone could do something malicious with that. At the end of the day, the question of that goes to that. Remember that the data needs to be authorized in order to exit your organization. Now let's take a look. Let me write it down from a Casio perspective. The Casio perspective will go on the other side. This will be the inbound data. Now the inbound data, we don't care about what they are sending us because they already sent us. What we care about is what's the completeness and accuracy of that data. We have to make sure, let me put it over here. We have to make sure completeness. We have to make sure accuracy. That's the important thing. We have to make sure that one calculator that's complete, that's the entire order. And one calculator is accurate, meaning that it's only one calculator and it's not 10 calculators. We received $8. It's $8 for one order, completeness. It's $8 for that same order, accuracy. So all of the controls that you're going to have on the EDI inbound are going to be related to the completeness and accuracy. So if we look for some of those controls are logs, for example, logs on everything that you received. So it's suddenly you have a mismatch on quantities. If you have a mismatch on pricing, you're able to go back to the logs. You have to make sure that you have techniques in place for reconciliation. Reconciliation techniques. For example, look at all the orders that you receive, how many orders were over there. So let's say in totals of orders that you receive on the day were a hundred orders received. And then you communicate to Amazon and you tell them, Hey, how many orders did you send? And they say a hundred. So, okay, now you can say, at least from a completeness perspective, we have a hundred units over there. How much money did you send us, Amazon? I sent you a thousand dollars. How much money we receive in EDI? A thousand dollars. Well, now we can check accuracy from that perspective. So having those check and balances is very, very important. Definitely make sure that some of this information, for example, logs, or details are going to go to a temporary folder, a temporary data. Make sure that there's a security around those temporary datas. What happens if someone is able to intercept that data before it's inputted into their warehouse, into their systems or anything, and just mess up with that information and say, hey, actually that was my cousin and I'm gonna change to 10 calculators, right? Or it could be like it's unintentional, not necessarily things are maliciously done. Sometimes it could be that it's unintentional, but for that, you have to make sure that you have enough security around that information. And definitely you have to make sure that you do this check and balances frequently and periodically to make sure that all the transaction, all the data that you are receiving is again, complete and accurate. With that, that's the very quick process on what EDI is on how all this process works. And what are some of the risks that you should be looking for? You should be looking when you are sending that information, the outbound data, because the risk is different. The risk is what type of information you are sending. Make sure that that's appropriate. That make sure that that's um, approved by management. Everyone knows what type of information and everyone agree that that's the information that needs to be transferred. When you are receiving the information, the inbound of information, you have to make sure that the information that you're receiving, because you are relying on that to make decisions to send products or depending on what industry you are, you have to make sure that it's complete and accurate. With that, I leave you over here. 
Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if there's anything that I didn't cover in EDIs or there's any acronym that I just threw it over there and maybe I didn't realize it. Let me know in the comments if there's any specific areas that need further explanation. Definitely let me know. I'll try my best to further explain, give more examples. And definitely, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you on the next video.